what happens when the zombie apocalypse reaches the highest levels of government? Oh, Check out this story we got from Post Millennial. U.S. Navy in shambles as leaders prioritize wokeness over combat readiness. This is a report that was commissioned by Congress. And they found in, in a couple instances, one, there was uh, on, the, on the USS Bonham Richards, I think it's called, it's a $750 million warship started on fire. Why? They said the people there weren't properly trained. But I can tell you what they were properly trained on, diversity. They have begun to prioritize diversity trainings over combat readiness. One person testified that they handed a CD to someone and said, here's your combat training. Go, go do it. But don't forget to finish your diversity training. No joke. So now you have the zombie apocalypse. We're in a zombie apocalypse. People don't realize this. Did you think the zombies were going to be like walking around mindlessly, just groaning and, and muttering nonsense? I hope you did, because that's literally what's happening what? with these people. That's what they're doing. And then what happens is they show up, they, they all start screaming, and the person goes, ah, 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 and then turns into one of them. Yeah, right now, now, now the Navy is. They're looking at their phones, and that's turning them into zombies. Soon they'll be in the neural net, and then they'll just be like full on, like getting the information. They'll be, you'll be looking at you in the eyes, but they'll be thinking about the Donald Trump video they're watching in their mind. <laughs> yeah. It's the Borg, dude. Oh, man. The problem is, you know, you know what's funny about the Borg in Star Trek is that it was efficient. You know, it was able to work as a collective and get the job done. What they don't realize is that who knows which idea or, or, or ideology will become dominant within the collective. So you right, we, we right now have this, this, you know, assimilate or die mentality among the woke left. They're just cultist ideologues who believe nonsense. And that's why the critical race theory thing is so weird, because it keeps changing. The left wokeness, it's amorphous. There's no rules. It makes no sense. They're just insane people. They're, they, they cancel each other. One day, Wimixin is the right word. The next day, it's the wrong word. They're like, oh, Wimixin is inclusive. The next day, oh, it's offensive because trans women are women. You can't say Wimixin. There's no rules. Then one day, they say Asian people are white adjacent. Stop defending them. The next day, stop Asian hate. They are just, it's just, it's just a, a, a zombie horde. The only thing the collective strives to do is protect the collective at all costs. So that means it will not necessarily provide any meaningful function to the, 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 the body at large other than minimize damage to itself. So when it gets into the Navy and starts destroying things and, and, and things just fall apart, that doesn't matter. The Navy failing and these ships falling apart, the U.S. surrendered to Iran because of this. That's what the report said. Did you, know, you guys know that? No. In 2019? What? No. The U.S. surrendered and American soldiers are on their knees with their hands on their heads as Iranian Revolutionary Guard come in at guns and point them at our soldiers. Why? Because they weren't prepared for combat. And that was under Trump. Trump didn't realize what was going on and he should have. Oh. He, had, he had people like Mark Milley, who is dumb as a box of rocks, who is part of the zombie horde. The whole system is just a flame. That's it. It's just, it's just so on fire screwed. right now. Man, you know what I'll say? <laughs> The night is always darkest before the dawn. But here's the way I see it. There is a, 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 an insulated bubble that is the community that we have and the people we talk to and the people who watch this show and the people who share this show. And go to TimCast.com, become members. These people are prepared, more so, paying attention, active, and principled for the most part. They're hate watchers, I'm sure. But if the system screws up, you know, you look at what Michael Malice says about peaceful divorce, mm -hmm. the dissolution of the United States. Mm -hmm. If that were to happen, I'm not worried at all. I got, I, got, I got some chickens. We got some garden food we're growing. We, we've got supplies. We've got resources. I'll figure it out. I would honestly love that. I love Michael Malice. So. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a smart fella, <laughs> yeah. huh? So if, it, look, if there was a collapse, the fires raged so hot within the federal government, it just falls apart. No real civil war, just, yeah, I think everybody's standard of living would go down. I think I'd be all right with it. No, it'd, mean, be I'd, it'd be horrible. It'd be horrible. No, 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 no. What I, what I mean is like, I don't want it to happen. You know, I want I want to see America flourish and be strong and, and last a thousand generations because we believe in really great things, but we're being corrupted from the inside out. So what what would I feel if I woke up one day and they were like, America is no more? I'd be like, all right, let's start planting food. Let's you know, I've, I've got survival guides and stuff. I'll look up proper crop rotation mm -hmm. and standard farming practices. I'll go to the community up on the mountain and say, guys, what do you propose we do? Shall we start, you know, working together and, and you know, figuring out things on our yeah. on our own? Look, man, I think at the end, I think if you look at people who live in rural areas, they know how to deal with storms. They know how to deal with trees falling down and power going out. Tornado. They know how to deal with running out of toilet paper. The people in cities don't. The problem, I was studying um, K-12 
Kings and Generals YouTube channel. Highly recommend. Go there. Amazing documentary channel. And I was watching a documentary on the fall of the Roman uh, Empire last night. What happened? Oh, well, firstly, it was barbarians attacked. The empire shattered into like six different countries. Dude, um, it's going to happen. The, 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 front, the, Ger- the Gauls, basically, the people from the north came down and took, took over all of Rome, destroyed it. And com- created the Italian Empire or the Italian country. And then over like 150 years, they stripped the rights of the Romans away slowly. So if, if we were to do a peaceful divorce here, I could see like, yeah, you've got your farm. But then all of a sudden in 30 years or 40 years, they come in and take a third of your property. And, and you're at, at, their, at their whim because they have the weapons, they have the government. And then 50 years later, they take another half of your property. And then all of a sudden they, they draft your kids into slavery. And so if we lose this government, we're at risk of, of suffering something like that, I think. Okay, so right now our government really super freaking sucks. I and I would not be sad to see that. that go, you know. I don't feel like we would miss it. All the red tape would be gone. All the restrictions on these weapons that we were guaranteed in the Constitution would be gone. You'd be able to, you know, do it. Shall not be to. infringed. Exactly, but apparently it can. Not so a difficult phrase. It used to be when they talked about dissolving the U.S., people would raise the issue of the military. They're like, well, what'll happen with the military? As far as I'm concerned, the military is off the table now the navy can't even defend against iranian soldiers two years ago are you serious and and tom cotton is talking about he has no confidence that the u.s military will be able to go up against china china freaking cares about their military they're taking this seriously we're not they can see it mark milley is a horrible sign of that and i i'm i feel like a dissolution of the union would be preferable to this not well, one china's not worried about the diversity uh-huh <laughs> so mm-hmm. maybe no, they're, they're focused they, they are lightly that's why they it. banned all the lgbt accounts on wechat <laughs> oh right yeah Literally overnight he's like you're them all we don't want that diversity stuff in china yeah you, you guys know about john teeter titer or what is it teeter no that name Titor. sounds familiar yeah it does sound familiar is a it's probably a hoax it was an old early internet thing where this guy claimed to be from the future oh yeah and there were some really interesting things about what he was saying and a lot of people were like wow the things this person is saying sounds like, you know, they're a really smart person. At the very least, someone was like, this has got to be like an MIT engineer who has access to like serious academic records to pull off this hoax or a team of people. Or maybe he was really a time traveler. That's more like. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's probably a hoax because, I mean, you know, look, what's what's the easiest solution? Someone on the Internet lied. Hey, that happens all the time. Huh. <laughs> but anyway, I bring it up just because uh, when this was going on, I think it was like the late 90s, early 2000s. John Teeter was posting on forums claiming that the U.S. was going to fall apart in the in the like early aughts or whatever and said like Canada would take the northern Midwest areas. The East Coast would join Europe. The West Coast would join China and the yep. southern states would go to like Mexico or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, starting to seem more and more plausible, isn't it? <sighs> I got to get off the East Coast. Yeah. <laughs> but to your point i think i would be cool if we like balkanized or whatever like i grew up like hunting fishing shooting i know how to do all that i could wrestling. survive i think wrestling perfect got the self-defense going on i think i'd be Suplex okay a grizzly bear yeah <laughs> you know one problem i could one, <laughs> one problem with the balkans is it's been basically the the butt of military ravage for like two thousand years i mean that that area of the world because it's splintered been splintered for so long is just constantly overrun conquered people are murdered genocide i mean just tra- tragedy in the balkans so War. because they don't have a strong unified force yeah um there were periods where they did like the byzantine empire but it's kind of sad you know so i we the power of our states yeah the federal government is so important because if we didn't have coordinated military between states we would just <laughs> been picked apart this Dude, this, this roman stuff man's freaky i know like the parallels to the roman empire so how would you so would you support a very decentralized federal government that you know bare bones it protects your rights it protects you know our nation's security but you know the states are kind of separate do what they want to oh, do Oh yeah I'd love to build an app where you could vote on local issues like a Tinder style app where you could be like hey everyone I'm this is Ian Crossland I want to put a, a fountain on Main Street it's going to cost $40,000 vote for this project Terrible so idea You go through and then if you like that you can swipe right add it to your list of things you want to put your tax dollars for yeah, locally Yeah that wouldn't be hacked Ter- at all. Terrible uh, terrible <laughs> idea I don't think so you, Absolutely you want during, to decentralize during, and localize governance basically During Occupy I Wall that. Street I don't know about I don't know about the app 
portion of it. During <laughs> Occupy Wall Street, when someone goes, I think we should we should get bins for the yeah. sanitation crew. Then someone was like, that's a good idea. I'm going to propose that our bins are fair trade. And then someone was like, yeah, but they got to be recycled too. And they went, uh -huh. okay. So we all agree, fair trade, recycled bins. Go find them. It was ridiculous. Sense. The stupidest thing. You could find those. They didn't. They did. They went to Walmart. <laughs> they were like, everyone agreed. And then they went to the store and said, we can't find it. Just buy the oh, ones from so Walmart. If, I, if, I, if they were like, vote for this fountain and everyone was like, yeah. And they put all this money towards it and they didn't know how to build the fountain. That's a problem. So you, Bro, you would have to be, like, be able to follow through with your plan. Have an I'll tell you exactly what would happen. Go. I've learned the wonders of uh, septic leach fields only in the past <laughs> year because I never had a septic system before. Great. But I can tell you exactly what will happen when a bunch of people who know nothing about anything show up and they go, hey, look, a big empty field. I propose we build a building on it. I vote. Everyone goes, yay, we vote. And then the one guy comes out and goes, guys, guys, that's the leach field for the thousand gallon septic tank. You can't build on it. And they go, we voted. We passed the resolution out of our way. And then they build on a septic leach field and, and then they die. Well, then I don't, I don't, well, I mean, that's maybe. why you have yeah, governors, <laughs> you have governors and mayors to, to like stop stupid behavior, you know, but so you mean elected representatives to yeah, be like, you still hey, have you them, but, but rather than like rely on an external person to come build that building for you, you could like locally, here's know, what would happen, dude. People would vote for the building. Then someone would say, look, that's a leach field. We have a regulation barring the, the building of that. And someone would go, I propose we get rid of that regulation. Ah, and they all, they'll vote to get rid of it because people want to make money. And it's, 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 it, bro, it's not easy to govern. So Direct democracy could, does not work. If, if a bunch of people voted for the, the building on the leach field and it was all these people voted for it, so it was ready to go. And then all of a sudden they found out it can't happen. It would be removed from your list. By who? By, by the, gov by the, by the governor, basically. Yeah, by the governor. So, so the, so the governor, whoever, whoever can, yeah. So that, that means the at mayor any point, or the governor. at any point, the mayor could be like, I do not want this civil rights bill deleted. I'm the smart one. <laughs> well, if it violated some sort of standard, yeah. What standard? By who? Who sets the standard? The leech field. Who sets the standard? Well, the people do through the governance. Great. So when the mayor says you can't vote on the leech field, like, like I said, they'll go, we vote to say you can. So the mayor is no, pointless at that point. Um, Bro, I'm not we, saying direct democracy over rule things. I'm just saying a way for us to pool funds locally. Mm. Yeah. For, do, you, do you ever look at a, 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 a map of a topographical map of Manhattan? You can actually see in the skyscrapers where the bedrock is. It's fascinating. Oh. Well, what do you mean? They can only build the skyscrapers oh, on bedrock. Wow. Be they can't build it on the dirt. It sinks. That's why there's a lot of cities where you're like, I wonder why they don't build skyscrapers here. Bro, it's a swamp. Huh. Like DC is a swamp. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like literally a swamp. So it's hard to build massive buildings because they sink. Manhattan is a big rock. So that they can build and they can carve holes and do subways. It's actually, you know, fairly easy. But there's like a, a line because there are some areas that are, you know, dirt and mud and ah. stuff. Regular people don't know these things. So they're like, I propose we build a building sideways. And then you're like, "That you, you can't. We shouldn't do that. I'm going to do it anyway. And then everyone's like, yay, sideways building. Woohoo. And then construction crew goes, hey, we're getting paid. Going to go build the sideways building. <laughs> and then they start building it. No. And then they just. <laughs> no, no. You definitely need checks and balances. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't stand that like people in upper echelons of government are deciding what gets built where. And I don't have like an opportunity to input. Yeah. Like a convenient way to input. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.